Begin the current daf, Mesechtis Babakama daf Yid Gimel. Begin four lines down at the top of the Yamid, where the Gemara goes back to explain and elaborate on the halacha of the previous daf. We had mentioned a halacha that the Chiv of Hezek is only Nechasim She'im Ben Me'ila, uh, the properties that don't have a misappropriation to them. And the Gemara made a dig. Oh, it sounds like uh, that only that there's no Me'ila. But you could be Chayiv, even if it's Kaidish. So that, the Gemara said, who is the town that must be like Rabbi Yisaglili, who holds that you could have Kachim Kalim, that there's no Me'ila, but, and therefore, it's Mom and Bailam at the same time, and therefore you could be Chai, because it would be considered as Shayri Ehu. And in that discussion, the Gemara brought the source of this teaching of Rabbi Lili, and now the Gemara is going to bring that entirety of the Brisa and discuss that Brisa. She just goes, Bank Bukhazach and Chesk, turn to Dabachem, she turns to Zvei Zdaf, should be a schos of achinim and a yisrael and yisrael and throughout the entire world. So, we're discussing today's daf are liability for damages caused by one's property. The previous mishnah said is limited to the following cases. The mishnah had said, which we're middle discussing now, is nachasim shem ben meila. Can't it has to be properties that don't have meila? If it has meila, meaning i.e. the general category of kadshim, then it's not going to have a liability of hezek. The chasm shel bnei brits has to be the properties of a person of the commandant, meaning of a Jew, and the chasm yichadim has to be designated properties, which will explain the Gemara exactly what does that mean. Some important terms and concepts today's daf are in the goyvim meimurin that if a carbon uh, damages someone else's animal, so one cannot collect from the sacrificial parts. In the goyvim malachma, let's say carbon toida damages, so although with the carbon toida are brought the breads, but the collection cannot be from the breads itself. So begin the current daf, daf yid himmel, four lines down at the top of the Yamad. The Gemara quotes Gufa, the Bryce that we had mentioned in the previous daf. It says, Umola mal bashem. Now, as you recall, this Pasig, although it sounds like, like a Me'ila type of a Pasig, it's actually not talking about anything about misappropriating hectish. It's actually a Pasig on someone who's doing a Shavua hapikadin. He's swearing falsely on a deposit, and he says, It's not true, I don't have it, and then he ends up admitting. So the liability is for the principle of fifth, the carbon asham, uh, a carbon asham. Now, why does it say Bashem if it's to your friend? So on that is Larabas Kachim Kalim. This comes to include the like a, a lower level Kachim, Shahim Mamoinu, where it is that person's money, the Rabbi Yisagalili, which recorded this in the previous stuff, to tell you that if let's say he says, here, hold on to my carbon shlamim, and you deny it and you swear to that effect. That that's going to be the liability of because there's a little blashem over there because it is a carbon, but it's still that guy's money. That's what's coming to include according to Rabbi Yisi Haglili. Now continues the brayso. But Azai Oimer he says Larabis es hashlam is coming to include the carbon shlamim. Abu Yisi ben Doistoyim he says loy ama ben Azai. No, ben Azai didn't say ella b'bchor bolvat only by the firstborn. Uh, animal. And that's where he said this halacha. That's the b'risa. So the Gemara explains. Amamar, the time of the b'risa quoted, ben the first version of ben himself, is that it's l'rabis esashlam. When we're saying that there's a l'rabis kachim kalim, that it's minor, and that's what Bashem comes to include, is coming to include the shlam. Says the Gemara, well, what is that coming to exclude when you're saying that this halacha of Bashem is coming to include that you'll be chayef for shvus on you when your friends deposit is a shlamim. Well, what's that excluding? Because we're talking about kachim kalim, so there's a few different karbanis in the category of kachim kalim. If you think it's excluding a bechayer, the firstborn animal, which is also brought as a, as a carbon, to say that it's not going to have this halacha of being considered the moment of your friend, well, how could you say that? If you find by the carbon shlam, it's, it's a more severe type of a carbon. It requires that you lean on the animal before it's slaughtered. When the sachem, you have to bring the libations, what's called the nichas nesachem, which there's, it's a flower type of libation where you have three isreinim, which are measurements for a bull, and two isreinim for a ram, and the one isreinim for a kebis is, uh, the, is the gemur in Menachas, that the Menachas from Menachas explains, which uh, Bechar does not require these nesachem. And the Tanufas Chaz of Ashaik. You also do this elevation process of waving the, the, the breast and the thigh. And Amrit Mam and Bailmo, even though it has like this more severity of Kedusha, it's still considered lower enough that it, the, the owner's money 
So Bukhar Mabaya, do I have to tell you regarding the firstborn animal, which Rash explains? We're talking about the Bukhar in Chutzla Aretz, that since it's not for sacrifice, so therefore the Kayan is not getting it from Meshulch and Gavaya from Hashem's table because it's not fit for Hashem. And as we had explained previously, that even the to basic Lili would say that. that um, so if that's the case, so I, you can't tell me that Benazis come to exclude Bechor because if Shlomim is considered as um, from, from a, a moment, moment by them. So, so for sure, Bechor, which has less uh, Kajim activities, for sure it's going to be considered as, as, as moment by them. So Elam Mavichan, he says, no, you're right. Shlomim, when we're saying it, Shlomim is not excluding Bechor. Is the Mute Meiser? It's coming to exclude my, what's called Meiser Behema. That uh, what happens is you take all the new animals that are born that year and you put them in the in the corral and they come out one at a time. And the tenth one is considered as it has to be brought as a carbon. Now, although it sacrifices a shlum, as the Gemara says in the last paragraph of Muhammad Aleph, even so, it's not going to be considered as mum and bailam when it's alive like a shlum. Why? Because it's time like learned in the Braisa. Bibachar by a firstborn animal that's unblemished. Remember, the Pasik says, Ach Bachar Shar, however, the firstborn of the ox, etc. It says in the Pasik, Loi Sifta, you should not redeem. So what you see from the Pasik is that you cannot redeem the firstborn animal, that it should be removed from its sanctity of Bachar to be sold, let's say, in the marketplace and to be weighed in the marketplace and so on and so forth. But Benimker Tam Chai. But it could be sold, it can be redeemed, but it could be sold unblemished when it's alive, and then the buyer will eat it in its sanctity when it develops a blemish, or if the basic English is around, he'll sacrifice it. So that's if it's unblemished. Now, if this Bechayr is blemished, then you could sell it alive and slaughtered, because once it's blemished, then you're allowed to slaughter it, so then it's not problematic anymore. Okay, that's what regarding Bechayr. The main thing we want from this price is the next part. But Maisa Nema, regarding Maisa Behem, that says, Lo Yigoyl. Also a terminology of redemption. Now the Gemara in Bechairis, in the fifth paragraph of Amadei Zemanalf, learns, here it says Lo Yigoyl. It also says by Cheramim. Cherim is a type of a hektish that also it says Lo Yigoyl. Now, by that Cherim where it says Lo Yigoyl, it also says Lo Yimachir Belo Yigoyl. So we make... What? Huh? By Maisa Behem it says Loyigol, and then there's another possible Loyigol by Cherim, which is a type of a hektish, like Erech and Charamim, this type of a hektish. And over there by Charamim, not only does it say Loyigol, it also says the words Loyimacher. To teach, through the Gzera Shava, just like over there, Mechira is also included in the category of what we're prohibiting, Geula, so to over here, that when we're saying Loyigol, is also including Mechir with that too. Right, so that's so that's what the, the, the Gemara is saying right now. The Ein and Nimkr cannot be sold, so not only could it not be redeemed, it cannot be sold loy chai loy shachot, not when it's alive and not when it's slaughtered. And that's what we said yesterday, that's why they try to avoid these types of things to have, let's say, partnership with non-Jews or whatever, uh, not, or you don't do the separation, not alive and not slaughtered. And loy tam bamum, and not blemished and or unblemished. But one thing we see is that obviously it's not mum and bailam. It's not considered as the owner's thing. And therefore, you're going to be putter from Shavuot Sapikadin by, um, you're going to be putter from Shavuot Sapikadin when, if let's say it's the person deposited a, uh, the Maisa Behemoth by you, because in contrast to Bechayr, Bechayr is yours that you could sell it. But by the halacha of the Maisa Behemoth, you cannot sell it because it's not yours. And therefore, when Ben Azai said that this halacha of the rabbi is kachim kam, that it's mamaynai, when he said shlamim, it wasn't excluding Bechar, it was excluding that of Maisa Behemoth, that that's not considered as the money of the owner. Now, Ravina Masnila, he actually learned this interpretation of Rabbi Yechanan that just we mentioned right now. He actually says it as safer, meaning we just said what Rabbi Yechon was qualifying in this b'risa. On the first opinion of Ben Azai, the Gemara actually quotes now that, that Rabbi Yechonon's teaching was actually on the next opinion 
of the Brisa. Abu Yisib ben Destoy, I mean, he said, no, Lama ben Azib ben Azib did not say his teaching, Ella ben Bukhar Bulvat. Only on Bukhar. That's where he says teaching. I mean, the first version said Ben Azib says coming to include, include the Shlomim. Abu Yisib ben Destoy, he says, no, he only said about Bukhar. So it says, okay, wait a second. The Mutemai. If you're saying that he's, that he's saying that this halacha, that, that it's, it's saying that there's a certain type of kachim that's going to be mama bailam, the first version said shlamim, which we said is excluding ma'is behema. And then we have a disagreement that the next town that says, no, he's only coming to good b'chayr. Well, what was that coming to exclude? Elam with shlam, it sounds like that he would be disagreeing with the first opinion. The first opinion was saying it's coming to include shlamim. He's saying, no, no, it's for b'chayr. So what? He's coming to exclude shlamim? How could you say such a thing? Hashd, if you find ma b'chayr. If regarding the firstborn animal, Shakadish Mirachem, where it's holy from the womb, meaning the second that it's born, it's a, it's already sanctified. Mamoina who and still, even though it has this severe type of sanctity, it's still considered the money of the owner. Shashlam Mibayar Shashlam, which is not considered the the, the the sanctified until you actually sanctify it when it was maybe it's seven months old. Do you have to tell me that for sure it's not going to be considered uh, that that it, in other words that for sure can be considered as Mom and Bailam? So, so therefore, on that question, Amr Rabbi Yechanan, he says, you're right. It's not coming to exclude Shlamim. It's Lamuti Meiser. So the, the, this, this Rabbi Yechanan was not going on the first opinion. He was going on this opinion. It's coming to exclude Meiser. You can like learn the Brisa. But Bukhari and Emma lay siftah. But the first one, and what says, don't redeem. And therefore, the Nimker Tam Chai. So we said, you cannot redeem it, but... We said it could be venimker. It could be sold tam chai, unblemished when it's alive. I mean, it cannot be sold unblemished, slaughtered, but it could be sold unblemished alive. Ubamum now, if it's blemished, then chai veshach, then we sold alive and slaughtered because again, there's no problem to slaughter a bechayr once it's ready to develop a blemish. Now, but but ma'aser namalo you go. By ma'aser behem it says it should not be redeemed, and elsewhere it says lo also, and it says over there not mechira too. So therefore, by ma'aser behem, but nimim could not cannot be sold. Not alive, not slaughtered. Not unblemished and not blemished. And therefore, that's what we're excluding when we say, we're excluding the halacha of the Maisa Behemah, where there it's not considered as your mom. And as we see, you can't even sell it. It's considered Hashem is mom. So therefore, it's not going to be a liability for Shavu Sabakad. But the Gemara has a problem with this interpretation because the problem is the words of uh, this second opinion of Yosef ben Testoi, when he says in Benazi, he says, that it's only only coming to Gul Bukhar. So that would sound like that only Bukhar and nothing else, but you're telling me that he holds Bukhar and Shlam as only excluding my uh, Behema. So it's more Kasha, yeah, that would be a difficulty in how to read the words Bukhar Bilvad according to that interpretation. Now, the Gemara goes back to what we mentioned on the previous daf. We had mentioned a diuk. We had said that there's a few criteria to be Chaya for Hezek. One of them is that if your ox gores an ox, it has to be that that ox is a nechassim that don't have me'ilam. So we had made a dik. We said, ooh, wait a second. It has to have that it doesn't have me'ila. But it could be that it's kaidish, just doesn't have me'ila. We said, oh, what is that? Oh, well, that would be kachim kalim, which has kedusha, but there's no me'ila yet because it's still mom and bailim. So we said, oh, it must be that our Mishnah is, is, is like this halacha of Rabbi Saglili. Now the Gemara has a different approach. Rav Amai says, no, the Me'ila that our Mishnah was saying was not to make the dik, oh, there's no Me'ila, but it's going to be holy. No. Mind the chasm shame ben Me'ila. What do we mean when we say that it has to be properties that don't have Me'ila, that then you can be high for damages? It doesn't mean specific Me'ila. It means the chasm shame ben din Me'ila. It's talking properties that don't have the halachic category of Me'ila, that there's no Kedusha for Shemaim at all. Because by Kedusha Shemaim, by things which are sanctified for heaven, the halacha of me'ilah categorically expla- applies like bakachi kachim. And but 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 it doesn't mean specifically that this one has me'ila. So what is something that does not have the halacha of me'ila at all is the head, the meaning of a regular person. So the nachasim of a head. Says you okay, but listen to the head. Why didn't you say then that of a regular person? So the gemara kasha, it's a difficulty, but that's what the gemara is trying to say that it does, wouldn't necessarily be like a biyasek lily. It, it, it means for the whole category of kachim that one would be patim. Now, the opposite, Amir Baba, he says that we were talking about up until now, if your ox 
damages the ox of hektish that we're going to say that you're going to be exempt because the shoyre'ehu amirach b'anda b'loy shoshal hektish, you're not liable for damaging that of hektish. Now, what's with the other way around? What happens if shlamim? You have your little carbonyl that you want to bring, you're waiting for the shalash or galim to go up, and you have this, 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 this carbon, this shar, whatever it is that you want to sacrifice. And now your shlam sheziku, your shlam damages someone else's ox. What's Allah over there? So that says Rababa, he says, Goiva, that the collection of the chati nezik of a shar tam will be mibesachan from the flesh because the halacha is that the damage of a shar tam of an ox in its first two times is only collected from the body of the shar itself. So, at least that monetary value. So the collection is going to be from the busser, from the, fle- from the meat of the animal. But it's not going to be collected from the sacrificial parts, meaning when you bring a carbon, so the meat is eaten by the kahana, eaten by the owners, and the, there are certain parts that are sacrificed in the bed. That collection that you collect from the value of the ox is only from its busser, not from its sacrificial parts. So you must have pshita. Well, that seems to be obvious. Of course you can't collect from there. It's burned on the Mizbeach. Of course you can't get that value. It says, Gimel Tzricha, no, this that we're saying you don't collect from the Emurim, what we're telling you is, That's to collect from the meat the equivalent of what was in the Emurim. Meaning, you cannot collect from the meat the equivalent of the sacrificial part. So, for example, let's say you have an ox worth 200 dinar, which gored an ox that was worth 200. You could only collect the half of its value of the meat, even though it's not even a complete hundred dinarim, because the value of the half of the imurim cannot be collected from the ha- other half of the basar. You'll say that, let's say the damage is... Oh, so that's what the Gemara is going to explain actually right now. Why not? You'd say because that's considered as hectish, and hectish is not liable. But the, there's the other... In other words, the other behema, divide the portion, take off the uh, portions that are designated for coin. No, we're not talking about the parts of coin. We're talking about here the imurim. Imurim are, are parts that are burnt in the mizbeach. There are certain so what parts. 50%? No, 50% is the idea that a chatzin nezek, when this karen, when the animal gores its first few times, you only pay half the damages. So if let's say you had a regular ox, not that of the case we're describing, a regular owned ox. So let's say the damage is, uh, is, 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 is 200 from the ox, totally wiped out that ox. You would have to pay 100 from this ox, which is worth 200. So only half, you'd collect half of the ox. Now, parts of the animal are emurim, are sacrificial parts. You can't collect as if, the, as if it's the aggressor from the imurim parts. So we said, obviously, you can't collect from it because it's, it's put on the mezbeh. We we'll say, no, that equivalent, let's say 25% of the animal is, uh, let's keep it simple, let's say 50% of the animal is imurim and 50% is basa. So you would say, okay, let's shift. Let's, 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 if, let's say um, the $100 that, that, that it's worth, um, let's say the animal damaged 200 and the animal itself is, 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 is worth... Um, <laughs> Well, let's say 100. So you could only collect chatzin nezek, which is uh, which is 100. That's how much the animal's worth. Now, but part of that worth are a murim. That you cannot collect from the buster part. You or it actually would be a little bit different the chesbin. But the point is that that you say that okay, you can't collect from the murim, but now put it onto the the meat. Collect that value from the meat because that was the animal that damaged. So you can't collect from the murim because it has to be burnt. Fine, give me more meat. Right, exactly, exactly. Only going to collect. Exa- you only gonna, mean you only going to collect the chatzinezik of the meat itself. Whatever liability the meat did, that you're going to collect. But you're not going to collect more meat for the equivalent of the imurim that you're not going to be able to collect from. So that's what Gemara now wonders. As wait a second, I'll leave it man. According to whom are you going? Like, because this is a machlekes um, later on. If it's going like drabbanan regarding this halacha. There's different ways of reading this, Rashi and Tesis, but when you have an ox that pushes a 
another ox into the pit. So we say by a tom that the owner of the ox pays, this is either a half or a quarter, and the owner of the pit is potter because uh, this ox pushed him into the pit. When it's a shurhamuid, the owner of the ox will pay either all or half, and the owner of the pit will be potter. But obviously we see that when you cannot collect from the, from the owner of the ox, you're not going to collect the remainder from the owner of the pit, even though the victim is found inside his pit. So you don't say, so it says the Gemara Pshita. So obviously you wouldn't be able to collect from the meat in correlating from the Imurin, because the Amri, the Rabbanan, they say, when you cannot collect from this one, you don't collect from the other one. So when you have an ox pushing in one ox into a bar, there's two mazik in here, which Taisa discusses. The pit is really passive over here. But the point is, is that the, 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 you're going to collect from the shur, which that's the one, the aggressor, and you're not going to collect from the pit. So even though he's, he's party to this, you don't say, well, when we can't collect from him, well, we're going to come to you. So therefore, the Gemara is equating for now the same things over here. This shur that Gord, well, the Imurmi can't collect from, but we don't say, oh, when we can't collect from you, fine, we'll go collect from, from the other guy. So if we can't collect from the Imurim, fine, we'll go get more from the meat. We won't say that, so, because according to everyone, that's obvious, as we find by the case of a shur who pushed one shur into a bar. Now, the other way, be able to Reb if we go like Ha'amar, but he actually says, and that would be the difficulty, he says, if you cannot collect from the owner of the ox, let's say there's not enough to collect from there. Then you do collect from the owner of the pit. So he says that actually by the case of Tom, the owner of the ox will pay a quarter, and the owner of the pit will pay actually three quarters to make up for the damage, because by bird there's no chatzinezek. So he'll pay the rest of the damage, three quarters. And by a muid, the owner of the ox will pay half, and the owner of the pit will pay half. So here also, why didn't you collect from the meat? Right, meaning that the owner of the the owner of the bar's liability. Who should be the owner of the of the pit? Yes, yeah, so that's yes. Yeah, so that's what um, that's what seems like that 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 Reb Nassim, is holding him liable for that. The question is that his own liability, and Tyson discusses that about um, what what is the who's really doing the hezek over here. That um, because really, if the ox wouldn't have pushed in this ox, then nothing would have happened. So, but it still seems like, but still, you're party to this. So he says well, here also. Then why don't you collect from the meat? Kenegade Murin. Well, here also both them damaged. The, the, the Hashem part and the, and the regular person's part. So, so even though you cannot collect from the Hashem part, but then you should collect from the, from the Hedgy part, uh, the equivalent. Because Reb Nassim says that when you cannot collect from one, you do collect from the other. So, so why wouldn't you say, then why wouldn't you be able to collect from the Basa? So, so the Gemara is asking, he says, I don't understand this Allah Chabra Baba. Man of Shach. Either it's obvious or actually it shouldn't be that case. So on that says the Gemara, if you want, you could actually say it's like Reb Nassim, or you could say it's like Rabban. How so? So the Gemara explains, if you want, you could say it's like Rabban, because how really, when do we say that we don't say that when you cannot collect from one to collect from the other one, how really, when did Rabban say that that would be betray Gufi? When there's two different bodies. There was a shur that pushed the ox into a bar. And that's what the Rabban said. No, if you can't collect from the, uh, from the shur, we're not going to be collecting now from the bird. The real master was the shur. We're not going to collect now from the bird. Abachad gufa, when it's one body, and that is if Rab Abed had not told us that you're not going to collect from the Emurin, I would have said that Masyamala, he would be able to tell him, wherever I could, I'll collect from. So uh, you're right, I can't get collect from the Emurin, but, but, but that was part of the damage. I'm going to collect from from the buster. And therefore, we needed Rabbi to say that actually, that no, you cannot collect from the buster in the equivalent of the Murim. I would not have known that from that teaching of the Rabbana.
That's one approach. Or Ibo Yisem Avon, you can say, Rabnasen. Actually, it's like Rabnasen, the teaching. So then the question was, if it's like Rabnasen, I thought he says, if you cannot collect from this, then you collect from that. So actually, you should be able to collect from the bus or more, because you cannot collect from the Emurim. He says, no. It's over there that the owner of the, of the victim, of the killed ox, tells the Baal Habar to the owner of the pit, Ana me to roi my ox bebeirach in your pit, ashkachase. I found my ox dead. So therefore, all the damage is on you. Look, whatever I could collect from the owner of the ox, I'll collect. And if it's a tam, I'll pay a quarter. Because even if he damaged by himself, he would only pay chatzin nezik. Now there's someone else with him, he'll pay a quarter. And the rest, I'll collect from you. Whatever I can't collect from him, I'm going to collect from you because my you had a bar, and your bar is chai for hezek. Now, I know that that ox caused it, so I'll collect from him. But whatever I can't collect from him, I'm going to collect from you. But as you turn to Medbez, I will talk over here, me, me, Matsi, Ami, you think he could say, what? That the meat damaged, but the, but the move did not damage? You think he could say on the meat that is more of the damager than on the murim? You cannot say that. So therefore, the, 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 the value of half the murim is going to be a washout because, because that, that has nothing to do with me. Here I could say, what do you mean? I found my ox in your pit. So I could say, you got to pay up. But it's not the same thing like in our case where, well, check us, what, is the, what did the bus have responsibility for the Imurim? The Imurim was part of this ox that, that, that gored. And that's the Imurim's responsibility. It's not my responsibility. And you can't collect from Hashem, which is, which is the Imurim. So that's your loss. And therefore, Reb Nassim would hold that you will not, if you, on the part of the Imurim, you cannot collect more from the, from the bus. So interesting, Gemara, that, that first thought it would be the same. And then Imur says, no, these are different principles uh, at work over here. Now, a related discussion, again, about a carbon that, that's damaging. So Amar Ravi says, Toida shehezika, a carbon toida, which is a Thanksgiving offering a person gives after he survived a, a, a difficulty. So uh, he brings a carbon toida. If his toida damages someone else, so gravim ibsara. So the, the victim could collect from the meat of the carbon toida. But in a gravim malachma, but what happens is when you bring a carbon toida, you also bring breads, 40 types of breads, with the with the carbon, the collection cannot be from the bread. Says Gemara, lechem bread, cheetah. Obviously, you cannot collect from the breads. What do you mean? The bread wasn't goring uh, with the with the shire itself. So obviously, you cannot collect from this. Says Gemara, that seifa is suchale. You're right. That's not the main point of the chiddush. The it's the it's the remainder of his statement that was necessary. Because the remainder of his statement is nizig, the victim oichol baser, he eats the meat. At, as we said, that the collection is from the meat of the carbon. So after the sacrificial parts are sacrificed, guess who sits down to eat the meal of the taida? It's not the owner, the guy who survived you know, going on that trip overseas. It's the victim from his animal. He sits down to a good steak from the carbon taida because that guy's taida gored his ox, and now he's collecting from the meat. The miskaper may be lechem, but the one who's getting the atonement, I mean the one who's bringing the carbon, he has to bring the breads. So he's got to bring, go, go to the bakery and, and bring the bread. So he says, Adam, that's also obvious. Well, what, where is the chiddush over here? Of course, the victim collects the meat and, and the bread he doesn't, and the bread has to be brought by the owner. He says, no, what would you say, keeping the lechem, since the bread is a the zebahu, is really the preparatory element of when you're bringing your carbon. So lay, malay, so let the, uh, the, 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 the one that you're prosecuting, the mazik, let him tell the victim, at achles basa, you're sitting down to eat the meat. But I know I see lechem, and I'm going to bring the bread. What is this? You're eating the meat. You go bring the bread. No, kamash malan the lechem chiva the bialmo. That's the chiddush that no, the bread is the owner's obligation. The victim is eating the meat because he's a victim of your uh, of, of your animal's aggression, and therefore he's going to collect from the goof with the basa, which is what the halach is by a sheratam. But the, but the bread that has nothing to do with me. You have the obligation to bring the bread to yourself. Now the gemara goes back to the halacha the mishnah. Now, let's continue on the criterion of what type of nechassim is one going to be chayef for nezek. The next element was, it has to be nechassim shein shel b'nei bris. It has to be assets of a person of the covenant. So it's more lemutim, and what's the covenant to exclude? If you think it's excluding what sounds like 
uh, it has to be a Jew, a Ben Bris, excluding an uh, idol worshiper, a non Jew, but that we learn in the Mishnah later in the Lamed Zayim base. Mishnah says, Shoy Shoy Yisrael, the ox of a Jew, Shinogach Shoy Shlev Kachav, and that course, the ox of a non Jew is Potter. So your car smashes into his car, you're going to be Potter. Well, maybe not. That car might be Adam Amazi. But the point is, is that the animal that does it is going to be Potter. So it's Gemara, that's not a difficulty, ton of Adam Amazi. That's what's called, we learned it, and then we explained it later on. But it's being alluded to over here when we say, Nechasim Shen Shalom Ebris. Next item the Mishnah talks about is Nechasim Amichadim. This is a more interesting translations. It has to be distinct, um, particular property. So the Gemara says, what does that come to exclude? So I'm going to says, Lemut, it's coming to exclude the following case. Ze Oimer, this guy says, Sharcha Hizik, your ox damaged this victim. But then another guy points the finger at the other guy and says, No, Sharcha Hizik, it was your ox that damaged. As Rashi explains, that they don't know whose ox damaged the victim's ox because there was many oxen of many people. And when the Mishnah says it has to be Miyuchadin, what it means to say is, that all the nechassim that damage have to be designated for one person, that there's no doubt. Because if it's owned by many different people, so then well, both possible parties are going to be exempt. So the says, really, that's the halacha? But a ton of We learned this in the Mishnah later on, the Vlaman Hayyam and Aleph. It says, Hoyishnayim, if there were two oxen of two different people, great for the acha, they were chasing after the ox of, 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 of a person, echad, of, of one other person. And again, this exact case, this one says, your ox damaged. But the other one says, no, it was your ox that damaged. Shnei they're both, they're both exempt. So it's, it's a mission later on. So it's the Gemara, same answer, Tony about the Mefarish. So yeah, we learned it, but then we explained it later on. Another approach to explain the mission, the Snita Tony and the Braise was taught like this. Prat le hefker. When we say it has to be miyuchad, it has to be particular, it has to be designated, means to say that it's excluding if it's the if ownerless property. So he must says, wait a second. Hey, what exactly would be the case that you'd be talking about? As the Gemara explains. As it sounds like, that if you're saying that you're our ox core is Latour de Hefker, the ox that's ownerless, and you're saying you're going to be Potter because not Miyuchet to a certain person, well, exactly, Man Tabale, who's exactly trying to collect from him if it's an ox of Hefker? That can't be the case of what we're talking about. So Ella rather says, the Gemara de Nagach Tura de Hefker, Latour de Dan. We're talking about where. A half core ox gores our ox. So the Gemara says, well, then laser will say, why doesn't they just go and bring it and take the collection from it? It's half He says, the Gemara, Bishakadim Bezacha by Acher. We're talking about where someone went and was Zoyche in it before he got a chance to collect it after the animal had already damaged. So it's not half anymore, cannot collect from it. And that's what we're saying that that guy who got it gets to keep it because you're only going to be. Uh, the, there's only a collection of Hezik when the Mazik is Nechas Miyuchadim. But when it was Hefker, then there's no right to collect from it, and therefore now, if it's not Hefker anymore, and then someone else took it, you're not going to have to collect from that. A third approach, Ravina Amei says, Lema'ute, it's coming to exclude the following case. Nogach, if let's say someone's ox gores, and the Ve'achekach Hiktish, and then after it gores, he's like, okay, I'm done with this animal. It's, I'm, I'm sanctifying it to Hashem. Or Nogach Ve'achekach Hifker, or after it gores, he goes and he declares it ownerless. So that's what the wording of the Mishnah is saying, that it should be, it has to be designated to one person at all times, meaning from the time it goes until the court case, it has to be owned by one person. But if he's makdash or mafker, then he's not going to be liable for the damages that his ox did. Ox did as the, it's not really, because it's, I mean, he's not going to get it back. Yeah, yeah, I'm and saying. You, you're, you're not getting it anyway. It's going to Hashem anyway. Okay. Right, I guess it depends what Hifker is. There's certain times a Hifker you could just go, he- you can, I don't know if it's like the kids Hefker kind of Hefker kind of, like, I don't know if you could do that. But um, sometimes Hefker has to be a bona fide uh, a- 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 abolition of your rights. No, but then the problem is, if you're going to be coming back again, it sounds like that it's going to be still nuchasim and yuchadim. You would have to wait till after the court case. So, as, because that's actually what the Gemara brings time to the and the Bryce, the Bryce that says this halacha says like this: regarding the sharha niskal, the ox that gets stoned because it killed a person, it says yes, arkenom rebuyudah. More than this, rebuyudah says another halacha kiddush. He says even if the animal 
gored and then he sanctified it. Or Nagar Vaka Hefka, he gored and then he was mafkrit. Pater, the owner's going to be exempt. Somebody says a Pasuk in Shemais. It says, talking about that Pasuk of the Nadav, he says, Shar Muid. So what the Allah is going to be. And then it says that Bahuid um, Bivalov says that that they that's where the word muid comes from that they testified against the owners already three times the hamus ish but going man now it killed the person etc so the pasuk says that begamba all of you must the owner now has to die also which doesn't really mean the owner dies it means that he has to pay for for kaifer but the point is that it sounds like that when it says ba'alav it sounds like his owner mean the ox's owner means this is one owner and that's from the time of vahuid of when, when they were warning him already, which is what made him mood, until the actual court case, which is when, when, the, when, the, when the Misa is going to happen of the owner, which again doesn't mean Misa, it's going to mean Kaifer. But that's what Jehud says, Ashtay Misa Bahamad the Bedin, until the death of the victim animal. And the court case, after he's Shamakach, equal as one, meaning with one owner. So you see that if you're Mafkar or Maktish, that there's not one owner, that, then yeah, you're right, there would not be any liability. Um, if he sells it, well, the problem is maybe the monetary value of the ox. Yeah, why is he going to say maktish or mafkir? Sounds like that if you own it, what is the monetary value? Maybe the monetary value would still be a, a collection of that, that, the value of the thing itself. So maybe that would be different. Right. Um, but the Gemara has a parenthetical question. It says, wait a second. Until Misa and Hamad have to be what? But the actual um, verdict of the court case doesn't have to be with the same owner? But, but the end of the Pasik, which says that the ox gets stoned, that's, that's by the end of the verdict. So why are you saying only till Hamad which is the beginning of the court case, and not till the Gemara din? So the Gemara says, I would rather say, it has to be that the death of the, of the animal. And then the court case, and then the verdict, all has to be with one owner, and therefore if you mock this or you mock it, then it's not going to have any liability, and then he's going to be part of it. That's what the Mishnah means in the third interpretation, what it's excluding when it says, has to be distinct for one person, not if he was mock or if he was mock The next halach of the Mishnah was, except if it's a, you're always going to be liable for all these things we mentioned, Unless the, it's a property that's that designated for the damaging party, meaning if the victim's animal went into the chutzr of the mazik, and now the shara mazik, the pit bull comes in, so then he's going to be exempt because, because as the Gemara says, the famous phrase, the Amali says to him, Turcha bishasi my boy, well, your ox in my domain, what's it doing over here? Which is an aphorism that people say this, like, what do you want from me? What's your ox doing in my, my domain? You, you're upset now that my pit bull grabbed off your leg, that's not my responsibility. If it's a Yeshua, some Yuched Zlamazig, your ox had no rights being over there, and therefore he's going to be exempt. Another case, which is debated how to translate this, the next words in the Mishnah are, Yeshua Sanizig Bahamazig, and the property of the victim and the Mazig, meaning if there's a shared property, a co-op, they have this, of the, the shared area of the Nizig and the Mazig, so it's not clear how to translate this because if you look at the words of the Mishnah, the Mishnah um, had said this halacha on Daf Tes. It said um, that what are the things I'm chayef for? Chasam she'em me'ila, no chasam she'em shabulai b'nei bris, no chasam mechadim. Ubechal makom in all places you can be chayef. Chutz mishus mechadis lamazik, and then it says the word mishus hanizik v'hamazik. Now it could be either a continuation of what we just said. Part of Chutz Mishas and Mechetz Lamazik and Rishas and Nezik Bamazik, that then you're going to be Pater. Or you could read it, no, Rishas and Nezik Bamazik, Yeshahizik Chava Mazik Lasham, Tashlum and Nezik Metabarz, that you are going to be Chayev. So it's not clear where this is. So the Gemara actually brings this as a Machlekis. I'm Rav Chizar Mavimi. He says, Chatsa Shutvin, this sheared courtyard, Chayev Ba, the Pasik is making you liable, Alashain Valaregel. On the mazik of Shane and Regal, that is, if his animal eats the paris of this other person in the trailer park that we share together, or let's say steps on the, the neighbor's bowls, he's going to be chayef. Why? Because what does the Torah tell me? Ubir biste acher. When we talk about Shane and Regal, it says the liability is in someone else's field. 
Now, which we know, Shein Regal is Patur and Shus Ram because it's not someone else's field, it's in the public domain. Here, this is the Acher. It's not Rishos Rabbim. It's a private area. No trespassing signs when you come into the, into the trailer park. Right? So, therefore, it's going to be Chayiv. Now, for sure, for Karen and its derivatives, because Karen Yechayiv even Rishos Rab. So, when the Mishnah said Rishos and Nizik Mazik, it's actually going on the next part of, this, of the Mishnah. But this is what the Mishnah is saying. You have to read it like this. That all these things we said, you're going to be chayiv, except for the domain that's designated for the damaging party, that the putter. You're going to be exempt. Period. Then it's rishus on nizig mazik. Then, like for example, a sheared courtyard, which is in the area for the nizig and the mazik. That says the mission, because when it damages chava mazik, the mazik is going to be chayiv. And the mission too much in the regal, because like Rashi explains, but Karen, I don't need to say that, because even rishus rabim, we both have a permission to go there. Your chayv for, for Karen, it must be telling me for Shane Beregel. And the Chiddush that the Mishnah is saying is that that's not Katsil, like Rosh Hashanah is not a public domain, this shared area that we have. That's one interpretation. That's Rav Chizda. The Blazami says, no, Pata Allah Shane Beregel. You're exempt from the Mazak of Shane Beregel in a Chatzar Hashutfin. And this is the way you have to read the Mishnah. Chutz, Mishra Samich Hadzal Mazak, you can be chayv for Hazik, except when it's a private domain of the Mazak. And Rosh Hashanah is a Mazak. The domain that's shared by the Nizig Mazik, Navi Potter, Ozig Mi Potter. And like we said, that's by Shane and Regal, because you need to have a beer beste acher. It has to be someone else's field, which is the victim's field, which is here it's not the victim's field because it's shared by the Nizig and the Mazik. But by Karen, you would be high because not any less than Rosh Sarabah. And then the Mishnah concludes, because the Hizik, and when the damage is Chabah Mazik, the Mazik can be liable. Well, what, what's that going on? If it's not on the continuation of what we just said, Rosh Hashanah and Mazik, that's La Suya Karen. That's coming to include the Mazik of Karen. According to Rebbe Lazar, because if you think it's telling me the simple Allah of Meitav, that we already learned in the opening mission of Beis. Rather, it's coming to include Karen, that you chai for that mazik, because we didn't learn it in one of the Arba of his Nazikin in the first mission. The Sigmar says, wait a second. That's good according to Shmuel that he said in the beginning of the parak, as we had his opinion on Dav Gimel on Beis, that he said that Mava is Shane. And Shoir was for Regal, and Mav is for Shane, so you would need, you never mentioned Karen, so you would have to have, that's Bimuram is to Karen, Oben Ar Mishnah. El Ravdam, according to Rav, that he said Mav is Adam. And when we said Shar of the, of Ab, the Abba, Abba, Abba Abbas was including all the elements of Shar, which was including Karen, Shane, and Regal, because he was Tana Shar, but the Shar, when we said Shar, we meant all the halachas of Shar, including Karen. So according to him, Chav Mazik La Suyimai, what would the words Chav Mazik come to include? I don't need a Bimram as Karen. I already have Karen explicitly in Shar of Dav Beis and Aleph. Says the Gemara, La Suyah the Tana Rabban. You're right. According to him, these extra words again because they're extra because the Rishus and Nizik Mazik is not going on those words. So just saying, Oshin here's a Chav Mazik. I already said that in the first Mishnah of Beis. What would it be including? Something else as we learn in the Brisa. The Brisa says when it says Kesher the Chav Mazik and says the words in the Mishnah when it damages the, the Mazik Michayev. Is Lahavi coming to include the liability of damage of a Shemichinam, of an unpaid custodian, Bashail, and a borrower, and a Sachar, paid custodian, Masachar, and a, a, a renter? Shazika Behema Bishusan. That if the, if the animal damage in their property, Tam Mishalm Chatzinazik, if it's a first few times, it pays, it pays half the damages. Umuid Mishalm Nazik Shalom. And when it's a mood, it pays the full damage, which is going to explain later on what this is coming to include. What are you talking about, Hashem Echinam, that you tell me, Keshezichav Amazik? Now, continues the Brisa, Nifritza, if let's say it, it broke the, the wall, Balayla at nighttime by itself, meaning this is a wall that was not a shaky wall, but the wall just collapsed, which was an oinus. Or you should put two listen, or let's say just bandits broke the wall open, Vyatza, and now the animal went out by Zikin the damage. And Pot is going to be exempt because that was, a, that was something beyond his control. Okay. Now the Gemara goes to explain this Brisa. I'm a mar. The master of the Brisa said, yeah. The Mishnah said these words, when it damages the Mazik and Vichayev, which we said, okay, what's that coming to teach us? So uh, according to Rab, so the Brisa has another Pshat which works for Rab. The four, the Dao Shaimrim, is coming to include them. So the Gemara says, wait a second, hey, what's the case talking about? As the Gemara explains. If you think it's talking about that the ox of the lender damaged the ox of the borrower, 
So, so says the Gemara that lay uh, malay, let the lender tell the borrower, why would I be chayiv for this damage to you? Ilema azik ba'almo, if that in a situation where if my ox gored some other person's ox, you would have to pay because because you're the shamer. Now that my ox gored your ox, you think I have to pay you the shamer for my ox having gored your ox? That doesn't make sense. Ella rather says the Gemara must be the ox turo the shel turo the marshal. We're talking about where the ox of the borrower gored the ox of the lender, and we're saying that okay, the borrower's ox was only a shamer I mean that was only a shartam. So he's going to pay only half the nezek for the, the lender's ox. Says the that doesn't make sense either. Because Lamele, let the owner tell him, I don't understand. Ilo itzik me alma. If my ox got damaged by someone else's ox, you would have to pay the whole value of the ox because you're a shayel, one of the cases. And a shayel is chayv and einzin for the entire amount of the damage. Now that it was your ox that damaged. And yes, it was a short time. But Pag and Niska, who did you think you're going to pay me half the damages? You owe me the entire amount of damage because you were the Shimer that's high for whatever happens. So the Gemara answers, The truth is, we're talking about where the lender's ox gores the borrower's ox. And that's what we're saying that, yeah, the marshal, the lender, is going to have to pay the borrower. For that damage. Now the question was, what do you mean? The borrower has the responsibility of protecting that it doesn't damage. If the marshal's ox gored someone else's ox, the show would be responsible. Now when it gores the show's own, then 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 he's then then he's not responsible. And what the marshal's gonna have to pay him back? He says, yeah, because Pagam is what are two months over here? Shakiba the love, the borrower accepted on him only Shmira's Gufoy. He only said to the to the lender, he says, Look. I'll make sure that your ox doesn't get damaged. But as you can tell me, but he didn't accept responsibility if that ox damages others. And since he didn't accept that responsibility, well, now that it damages his own, the, the lender has to pay him for the damage of, of his own personal ox. So he says, really? That's the pshat? If that's the case, look at the end of the price. The price says, if the, if the, if the wall just Broke open at nighttime. Or Shabbatu, listen, more bandits broke up in the wall. And then, so the lender's ox runs out and damages. Potter, the, the, the borrower is going to be exempt from the liability. Now, the question is it sounds like Habayim, if it happened during the daytime, well, Chayv, then the, then the Shem would be liable. I thought, Holy Kibbal of Shemir's Nazakov, didn't you tell me that he didn't accept responsibility for the damage of, of the lender's ox? So the Gemara says, No, the safer is a different case. Hachakam, the Bryce is saying, Im kibulab shmiras nezakam. No, the Bereish was told that he didn't accept, and therefore the mashal is going to be chayav if the damage does to the sh- to the shayel's own ox. But the same was saying, if the shayel did accept responsibility, not only that the lender's ox itself should not get harmed, but that it shouldn't harm anything else, then chayav is going to be responsible. And that, in spite of that, says the Bereish. But if it's a balayla, but if it, if it broke open at nighttime, or Shabbatul list him, or bandits broke it open, but when they damage, that part is going to be exempt because that was an onus beyond his control, and therefore he's going to be punished. Thank you to any time.